we've come up with a much easier way to record a voiceover directly in the timeline. With one button now, you can click and begin to record, including a pre-roll and a post-roll. We've always had this ability, and I've had a different demo where I showed how you can do this, but we still found it a little bit difficult, especially for new users. So you have to set up one thing, and then once that's set up, we're set ready to go. Now you can use any microphone. I, I happen to be using a blue snow, uh, snowflake here. You could even use the built-in microphone in your laptop for a, you know, a quick temp track, or you could even use this for annotating a video to send off to someone else. So we'll set this up and we'll begin to record. You do have to have the audio portion of your computer correctly set up. So usually the microphone is okay, but if you have a separate interface you need to set up, I'll show you where that is and we'll get recording. All right, first I'm gonna go into my preferences. It's in the edit menu um, on Windows. It's in the Premiere Pro menu on Mac and I'm gonna choose audio hardware. And here I'm using the built-in uh, sound for Premiere Pro in Windows, and I'm gonna click on my ASIO settings, and this is where the blue snowflake microphone shows up. Of course, I could use my internal microphone. I'm gonna leave all the settings uh, where they are, and click OK, and click OK. Now my microphone is set up. Next is the important part, which is exposing a new control. What's important is I wanna show you that there are four separate areas to the timeline and, and I find that this is an area where people get confused because actually it's not easy to really see where one area ends. There's four areas. There's the header area and that header area has a uh, video section on the top and an audio section on the bottom and then of course in the timeline on the right hand side we have our video tracks on the top and audio tracks on the bottom. To get this next setting there's two ways to do it. I can click here on the little wrench and choose customize audio header or I can right click inside this area inside here. And you can open these areas up in several ways. You can click and drag this area down in here. You can double click on this area to open that up or you can use the scroll wheel on your uh, mouse if you happen to have a wheel on the mouse. If you right click inside here and choose customize, you'll notice that we automatically open that area up for you. And here you can customize your layout and bring in different controls. For instance, you can bring in a track meter and a pan left and right balance. This microphone up here is what we want to bring in. And it's also a little bit difficult to see, but there are three different levels inside here. And I like to drag the voiceover record down to the top level in here. And if you let go and it successfully drops inside here, then you've done the right thing. You can continue to drag more of them in here and click OK. The reason I like it in the top is you'll notice that I can see it even when the track is closed. Now the next thing you need to do is set up uh, the volume level and normally the volume level for a microphone, uh, especially on a laptop microphone, they're set usually okay. But it's a good idea to test that just in case something is wrong and uh, you need to test that down in here, a really easy way, again back in here right click and you can sh see it says voice over record settings and when I select that I get a little uh, um, little pop-up window and you can see the green is going here and if I clap a bit here boom boom you can see that it's uh, obviously recording uh, my voice you can give it a default name right now the default is audio one but uh, maybe you wanted to give this something a little bit more descriptive you can also come in here and choose the same settings that we had before in the um, uh, audio hardware settings the only thing is that some of those uh, settings won't show up unless they're correctly set as I showed you. So if you just go in here and you don't see something, go back into the, your, your audio hardware setup in preferences. You can also have countdown sound cues. That's where it's beeping as it's counting. We're not going to have those. And you're gonna have a pre-roll of three seconds. And what's important about this pre-roll of three seconds is I'm gonna be starting at the beginning. So when it pre-rolls, 
the, the uh, playhead isn't moving. But if you're starting to record your voiceover later in the timeline, as soon as you hit record, if you leave it on three seconds, the, the, the playhead will actually physically move back three seconds and roll in. This is a great way to prepare you for that voiceover recording, to get into that um, moment that you need to start the voice. And then a post roll of two seconds. And you can turn either of these off. And I'll click close. The next thing to do is to actually click on this little microphone. And when you do that, watch up here in this window. You'll see a countdown and you'll see the word record and down in our microphone it will turn red. And the whole time I'm recording, I'll be recording down here into the timeline. And you won't see a sound wave, so don't worry, don't stop recording because you don't see a sound wave. We wait till we finish recording, and we stop, and then we draw an image of the sound wave. And just so that you, you know, if you're not familiar with the whole uh, process of sound waves, sound waves are not inherent in the recording. A recording doesn't have a picture of what the sound wave looks like. All applications, Premiere Pro included, has to draw that after it reads the sound wave. So we're doing it when we finish. All right, we get ready. I'm gonna hit record. It counts down, three, two, one. And now I'm recording my voiceover. Oh, oh, and you hear what's happening. Let me hear the stop. Oh boy, first big problem. I don't have a pair of headphones on and I have my speakers on. Typical problem, I'm gonna have some feedback. So the feedback is gonna occur because the speakers are playing what I'm recording while I'm recording at the same time. So you have a few choices in here. You can um, use a pair of headphones, which shut off the speakers in your laptop, uh, or if you're using a larger system with an interface, you can turn that audio down. But if we go back to our preferences, preferences, audio, not audio hardware, we can uh, turn on mute input during timeline recording. Oh, okay. Uh, this is going to be much better. So let me select that and delete it. And you'll notice that the clip is over here on the left hand side, audio one. And I'm going to delete that out of there. And I'm going to start again. So let's try this again. Three, two, one. And now I'm beginning to record and I'm watching this uh, gymnast do some absolutely crazy things on the pommel horse and we go to some amazing uh, slow motion capture all shot on the airy uh, alexa camera beautifully done wonderfully shot and playing back here in real time and i hit the stop button now i told you that we draw the waveform and you're probably looking down here saying where's the waveform well we have a little skinny track remember three different ways click or drag to make that bigger or double click on it or use the scroll wheel. And there it is. I'll go back in here and hit play. And now I'm beginning to record and I'm watching this uh, gymnast do some absolutely great. So that's a great way to do it when you want to automatically turn off the sound. Remember, I started recording and you got all that feedback. So uh, it will automatically turn itself off and then will automatically turn itself back on when I'm finished recording. That's the easy, great way to set up Premiere Pro CC 2014 to record a voiceover. Now, last thing I'll leave you with is if you're looking at these waveforms, um, and these are called rectified uh, waveforms, You'll notice that they have a certain look. They start from the bottom and go up. Just to let you know, if you want to, you can turn off these uh, waveforms. So rectified audio waveforms, turn that off and you go back to the old style waveform. So whatever you choose to look at and edit, you're fine. And if we want, we could now chop this up into different parts and I can start to move this around on the timeline. So I've got unbelievable control to re-record, record, move these around, cut, and record brand new voiceovers directly in the timeline of Premiere Pro.